Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the lead code question, sub area product less than K. All right. So in this question, we're given an area of positive integers called nums, and we need to count and print the number of contiguous sub areas where the product of all the elements in the sub area is less than K. So what is contiguous over here mean? It's basically that we can't have a sub area, which is 10 and then six. The numbers have to be right next to each other. So we can have 10, five and two and so on and so forth as a valid sub area. Okay, so in this case, what the question is, it's we have this as our area and we have a K value of 100. So the cumulative product should not be more than 100 or equal to 100. So in that case, we have 10, five, two and six by themselves since they're all less than 100. Then we have 10 and five, which when you multiply them gives us a value of 50 and 50 is less than 100. And similarly, you, you also have 10, five and two, but so when you do 10 into 5, it's 50 into 2, 100. 100 is equal to our k value. So that is not going to be a valid answer. So in that case, that is not going to be a valid sub area. And we're not going to count it. Uh, again, we have 5 and 2, and then we have 2 and 6. Then we also have 5, 2 and 6, which gives us a value of 60. And yeah, so those are going to be the eight sub areas that we have. And that's what we output. We output the total number of sub areas, which have a product less than 100. All right, so I remember doing this question, um, a very similar question to this, and we're going to be using the same or similar method, uh, which is the two pointer method. Okay, so real quickly, let's just see how that looks like. So over here, we're going to have two variables. So we're going to have a left pointer, and we're going to have a right pointer. Now, both of these pointers are going to start at the zero with index, or in other words, it's going to start at the first element. Now, why are both the pointers starting at the first element? And the reason for that is because the individual number itself also counts as a valid sub -air. So for example, over here, 10 by itself counts as a valid sub -air. and so on and so, so, uh, so forth. So 5, 2, and 6, they're all valid sub -air. So which is why we're going to start the left and right pointer at the same position. All right, so before we actually go through this step by step, let's just go through the entire idea once. So what's going to happen? Our right pointer here is going to be moved to the right. We're going to keep moving this pointer of ours until the product, whatever product we have so far, is less than our k value. Once that product becomes more than our k value, we're going to move our left pointer until the k, uh, until our product becomes less than the k value. And each time we move our right pointer over here, we're going to add that movement to our count, which is what we're going to end up uh, outputting. Okay, so now let's just go through this step by step. So over here, we're going to have one more uh, variable called product. And this variable over here is going to start off at a value of one. And this is going to be used to count or keep hold or track of our cumulative uh, product. And finally, we're going to have our result. And this is what we're going to end up outputting. And obviously, our result is going to start off at zero, since in the beginning, we have zero sub arrays. All right, so at our first iteration, what's going to happen is that our right value starts at zero, and obviously our left value also starts at zero, and the zero refers to the index. Okay, so now what's going to happen is we're first going to account for this 10 in our product. So to do that, we're going to do one multiplied by 10, and one is going to be the product that we start off with. So one into 10 now gives us a product which has a value of 10. So over here, we're going to check if this value is less than k. It is less than k. So in that case, what's going to happen is we're going to go to our result and we need to account for the sub area. So what we can do is we can just add one, but that's actually not going to make any uh, too much sense. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to take the left value or sorry, uh, we're going to be taking the right value, subtract that with the left value and add that by one. Now, the reason that we're doing this is so that we can account for each of the uh, elements by themselves and all of its possible combinations. So the purpose of this should make a lot more sense as we go through our iteration. So currently our left and right are both at zero. So zero minus zero plus one gives us a value of one. So we're going to do zero plus one, which over here just ends up giving us a new result value of one. And that makes sense because we currently accounted for the sub area 10. So now what's going to happen is we're going to move our right pointer to the right. So now this is the new location of our right pointer. And we're going to do the same steps. So we need to account for the 5. So 10 multiplied by 5 gives us a value of 50. Now is 50 is still less than 100. So now in this case, we're going to do the same thing. So right minus left. So currently right is at 1 and left is at 0. So 1 minus 0 gives us 1 plus 1 gives us 2. So now over here, we're going to add the value of 2. 
So that's going to end up giving us a value of 3. 2 plus 1 equals 3. Now, how does 2 make sense? So we already accounted for the 10. So the 2 basically means that we're doing 10, 5. So 10, 5 is one subarea. And the element 5 itself is going to be the other subarea. So in this case, we're accounting for both of those conditions. All right, so now we're going to move our right again. So it moves over here. Let's account for that. So 50 into 2 gives us a value of 100. All right, perfect. So 100 over here is actually going to be equal to our k value. And this value has to be less than our k value, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to move our left pointer so that our product over here becomes less than the k value. So now we're going to move it by 1. So now our left pointer, we move it by 1. And as we move it, what's going to happen is that we're not going to be accounting for the 10 over here, right? Since we moved it, the 10 is not part of our cumulative product that we're counting over here. So we're going to divide this 100 by 10, and that's going to give us a new value of 10. 100 divided by 10 is 10. Okay, and over here, we're going to check if this value is less than k. It is less than k. So that is going to be our new left value, and we're going to stop. And now we want to account for this in our results. So to do that, our right value is currently at 2, and left is at 1. So 2 minus 1, 1, plus 1 is going to give us a value of 2. So now we're going to add 2 to our results. So 3 plus 2 now gives us a value of 5. And that also makes sense because we have 5, 2, and then we have 2 by itself. And finally, now we're going to move our right over here. So now this is currently at the very ending. So what's going to happen over here is we're going to uh, add this to our product. So 10 into 6 now gives us a value of 60. And 60 is less than our k value. But if the, it was not less than our k value, what we would do is we would move our left pointer so that it does become less than our k value. So over here we have 60. And now we want to add that to our results. So in this case, it's going to be wherever the right is. So it's currently at 0, 1, 2, 3. And our left is at 1. So 3 minus 1, 2 plus 1, 3. So 5 plus 3 gives us a value of 8. And 8 is going to be what we end up resulting, outputting, not resulting. Okay, so that's going to be our final answer. So yeah, so now let's see how the code part of this looks like. Let's start off by defining our variables. So over here, we're going to have our left pointer, which is going to start off at 0. Sorry, okay. Then we're going to have our results. This is also going to start off at 0. And then we're going to have our product, which is going to start off at a value of 1. Okay, so now that we have this, we're going to go inside of a for loop. And this for loop is going to give us our right value. And I'll call that r. So for r in range, length, of num. So we're going to be going from 0 all the way up to the ending of our nums list. Over here, our first step is going to be to account for this new value inside of our product. So to do that, our product is going to be multiplied with whatever value we're currently on. And to get that, we can do nums and then r. Okay, so now we have our product. And over here, we're going to check if our product is less than our k value. So if product is less than or equal to our k value, then in that case, that means that we need to move our left pointer in order to decrease the value of the product. So to do that, we're going to be using a while loop. And over here, we're going to be having two conditions. So the first one is while our product is greater than or equal to our k value. And the second condition we have is while our left value, or sorry, L, is less than or equal to our current right value. So those are going to be our two conditions. And the reason we're doing this is because our left value cannot be greater than our right value. Okay, so over here, each time what we're going to be doing is we're going to go to our product and we're going to divide that by the current number that we're on. So to do that, we're going to do uh, divided by nums and then we're going to go to left value. Sorry, L. And one more thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving our left pointer to the right by one. So L plus equals 1. So that moves it to the right by 1. And in this case, if right now our product is less than the K value, then in that case, we're not going to go inside of this while loop again, and we'll be done by it. And by the ending of this, we will get a new value for our left pointer. And now what we're going to do is we need to account for that inside of our result. So result plus equals, and we're going to be doing the same step. So right minus left. And the reason we're doing right first is because the right value is always going to be greater than or equal to our left value. And we're going to do plus 1. So that is going to be the end of this. And at the very ending, we're just going to end up returning our result. So let's submit this. 
And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helped you. Thank you. Thank you.